Hi! Due to the way YouTube works, I want to make a quick announcement before this video. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button or leaving a small comment. It really helps. If you feel like helping even more, you can check my Patreon or Ko-fi accounts. All the links are in the description box. Thank you! Greetings! Today's video is a bit different. Some time ago, artist Matthäus Urbanowitz shared a video where he recreated Miyazaki Kantoku's watercolor palette. I really wanted to give it a try for myself, so I slowly collected everything I'd need until I was ready to put the palette together. A few notes before continuing. The printed sheet you see me use to choose the colors is from Matthäus' video, so I will link you to it for more information. Also, regarding the discontinued colors, my friend Otokano has recently shared a pretty awesome video where they take a look at the colors and recreate them. I will also link to that video if you want to reference the color recipes. And a last note, after watching Otto's video, I started thinking about the proper way to address Miyazaki Kantoku. I am not Japanese, but I'll follow Otto's lead and address him the way a Japanese person would. I really respect the man and his work, and want that to come true in this video. Kantoku refers to his position as a movie director. The palette I'm recreating has 24 colors, including three that will have to be mixed from other paints, as they are no longer available. All the colors are by Holbein, and so is my palette. I happened to have an unused Holbein metal palette with room for 24 colors. Quickly, on these palettes. The weight is pretty surprising. These are heavy. They are also enameled by hand, and as such, they often present flaws. The metal underneath has a tendency to rust, so this is not ideal. These palettes are quite expensive and I, for one, would have appreciated a better standard of quality for the price. However, if you have one and are sort of stuck with it like I am, here is what I did to try and fix the rust spots and chipped enamel. I got a bottle of Tester's enamel paint in white and a bottle of the solvent. Using a chip brush, you can repaint the chipped enamel. The solvent is to clean the brush, as water won't work with this paint. Also of note, the paint is really stinky. I've yet to see how this solution fares on the long run, but I figured it's better than leaving the rust uncovered in a palette that will see some water sooner or later. To make it easier for me, I've put the paints in the palette, in the order Matthias has ordered them in the list he shows during his video. That way, I can easily refer to my printed sheet to identify a color. I poured all the tube colors and then used a piece of disposable palette paper to mix the colors that are no longer offered by Holbein. The recipes are to reproduce something with a similar color not necessarily to recreate the exact pigment mix of the original. I also eyeballed it. I figured it's not super important to get the exact proportions. I proceeded to swatch the colors. I'm excited to see opera rose and bright violet in there. You know, like I often say, these colors are fun in mixes and can be used in a sketchbook with no concern for light fastness. The color selection has many blues, greens and yellows. It's a bit weaker in the reds, but that makes room for muted and earthy colors. This is not a palette focused on single pigments at all. The intents seem to provide colors that are handy for the kind of illustrations created by Miyazaki Kantoku. As a demo for this palette, 
I'll be painting the colors on a drawing made by my significant other. I felt like this palette really lent itself well to painting detailed illustrations, and this is what I wanted to try out. Painting so many details is always a lengthy process, but the paints worked really well. I was able to get a more neutral red by mixing the crimson and the vermilion hue, and found uses for the muted colors. I was also able to get a good dark color from the ultramarine deep and the burnt umber and burnt sienna. The colors layered really well, and I was able to build it up to the effect I wanted. I had a great time setting up and using this palette, and I'm looking forward to using it again. I find it really valuable to experiment with other artists' choice of colors. It's always a good way to learn more about colors and mixing. What do you think of these 24 colors? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, bye bye.